97's The Odyssey Review and Thoughts miniseries. Now, I start this review with... I start this video with a review with zero spoilers. And certainly, if I do spoil anything, I'll warn before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers so that you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. As soon as I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including for the the ending of the miniseries. Now, let's see. Yeah, so I have watched this miniseries four times total now, and I absolutely love it. Now, the plot. Following the events of the Iliad, King Odysseus begins his travel home to Ithaca, to his wife and son, but it is a journey full of hardship. Now, in case this is something you've never heard of, and I realize that's going to be a lot of viewers, you know, when you look, there there are not a lot of, you know, IMDb user reviews, not that many, and if you go to the IMDb external reviews section, I think there were like five links in there, which is very, very little for, you know, I, I forget, Virtuosity, was that maybe like a 50 or 100, something like that, you know, so comparatively, that's also a movie nobody remembers, even if they did watch it back then. Anyway, this is an adventure fantasy drama miniseries from 1997, and yeah, it aired as two episodes in 1997, and you, you know, it was directed by, I'm going to try not to butcher this, Andrei Konchalovsky. But it, you know, you may not have heard of him, but it was executive produced by Francis Ford Coppola. And it's trying to do a thorough retelling of the epic poem. It does get cheesy, which will bother some people. I've seen some call it tacky. In part, it plays like a late 90s action movie. It's fairly of its time. I feel like it makes a lot of sense when you have gods and... You know, let's keep it vague and say other ancient Greek mythology in live action. I feel like you have to get somewhat cheesy. I get why it bothers some people. You know, personally, I've seen other adaptations that weren't cheesy and they kind of felt underwhelming. You know, and you don't have to take my word for it. You know, if you read, for example, the IMDb reviews, You'll see there are a number of people who love the miniseries and don't say that it's cheesy. So, you know, either they didn't feel that it was cheesy or maybe they also, like me, felt that it was appropriate. And I really appreciate it. It doesn't shy away from the romantic aspect or try to justify it for those who might feel that it makes them look weak to be that devoted to, a, to just one woman who they don't have clear evidence have stayed true to them. And... I would recommend you watch the video A Long and Difficult Journey or The Odyssey Crash Course Literature, which, yeah, you know, that there they point out some of the aspects of the poem which a little... Uh, Yeah, stuff that today feels kind of messed up. And let's see. Yeah, so as far as storytelling goes, there is a lot of just like characters telling other characters stuff, but there is a pretty good amount of visual storytelling as well. You know, in, in part, it's the, the kind of yeah, you have to have, if they were going to fit in all that they, they did, they would have to make some of it just be explained by, you know, characters. And, you know, basically their choice was either omit a lot of stuff that they could fit in, just they'll have to tell it rather than show it, or... The, 
one second. Yeah, either either they have to omit it or they have to settle for just having characters explain things. I didn't really find that it got excessive with the explaining. It would if the it would have been a lot of cutting between different people and different places to just show something that wouldn't necessarily even take that long to show and you would lose sort of the emotional through line. This focuses very much on Odysseus, Penelope, and their son Telemachus. And basically anything, it's, it's what affects those three. And, you know, and, and Odysseus is the, the protagonist. He is the one that's the most focused on. And yeah, so, you know, every so often a character will show up and tell him, so the gods have done this or that, instead of us seeing the gods do or say this or that. And I understand why it might bother some people, but it's, you know, I don't think it would necessarily add that much runtime, but it would just cut away and then we'd be like, oh, I guess the, these are the gods. And we'd see them briefly say the thing and then cut back. And it just... You know, if, if you compare, yeah, it will frequently be adaptations. If you compare adaptations that make sure to show every single little thing to ones where a character will explain a thing instead of us cutting away from the main characters or major characters very much, you know, it does have um, an effect on your engagement. You know, it's, it's different when it's a poem and you're either reading it or having people recite it to you, you know, yeah. They did decide to omit a lot of the repetition from the poem, which some have theorized was in the poem in the first place to make it easier to remember back when it was retold verbally before it was written down at all. And it is also no longer told via flashback, but instead we see it happen as it's happening. You know, there's... Yeah, and these choices make a lot of sense for a visual adaptation and something made so long after it was written down. I do acknowledge it was an important part of the poem, and some have said that a lot is lost by removing it. But it is very rare for an adaptation to not lose something and I would say it gains a lot in return. It's a lot easier to digest for modern audiences. And while this is a miniseries made up of two episodes, on DVD it is presented without a previously on, and in fact runs a single nearly three hour thing, you know. There are a few fade outs where it looks like they would put an ad break. I've never seen this on TV. I've only watched it off DVD. But other than that, it doesn't really remind you that what you're watching once ran on TV you know, was originally made for that. You know, I've, I've noticed in a lot of TV shows, American TV shows, you can tell when an ad break is coming up because they're going to have something really intense, maybe a cliffhanger kind of thing, to make sure you stay through the ad break and then, you know, yeah. And that's not, I don't know, either it isn't the case here or it just flows well enough that, you know, but that's, if I had watched this with ad breaks and I still remembered what that looked like, maybe I'd have an easier time telling, but, you know, I mean, I mean you can tell that it's a, shoot, you know, miniseries, not a movie, but I wouldn't say that it's something where, like, you know, some, some shows, excuse me, if you binge them, it gets really obnoxious with previously ons, ad breaks, and, you know, all this stuff where you, you can really tell, okay, originally this was on TV, there'd be an ad break, I forget, is it every seven minutes, ten minutes, I forget. And each, you know, there would be a week between each episode airing, so, you know. Now, the it, it manages to get across a number of the moral messages of the poem. 
and there are a number of unexpected twists and turns along the journey and yeah this does a pretty good job of fitting in you know a lot of not everything from the poem is there but it fits in almost everything and it somehow manages to not end up feeling just exhausting like I would really one would guess that it would just yeah be exhausting to sit for nearly three hours and just see this one guy constantly having to deal with all these setbacks you know especially today when the idea of you know the the yeah it's it's told very early you know one of the main things is that Odysseus is deemed as too arrogant he says that um, he, as a man, can do so much that he doesn't need the gods. And today, you know, back then, that was like, there, there you go. You know, don't, don't blame me. I'm just the messenger. God's told us we gotta, we gotta stay faithful to the gods, no matter what. Just, and today, you know, that seems. You know, it's it's not as as relevant and as it it doesn't have the the uh, what's it called the the gravity of it that it had back when the poem was originally being told verbally, and yet it still manages to yeah, I'm I'm very impressed with how well they did at making this adaptation so long after and still yeah i have to admit i am always down for amand asante acting intense and being impassioned he's one of the many fun parts of the sylvester stallone judge dread movie and i realize a lot of people just clicked away from the video thanks for your time anyway and yeah you know the the in in that movie it is over the top. It is, you know, here I do feel like we, we really do care. You know, it doesn't get to be too. It's, it's cheesy, but it's effective. And the direction is quite good. And the opening is really great. The, you get into the main characters immediately. It opens on Odysseus rushing home as his wife is giving birth and you know we yeah so not not long after that it skips ahead until after the events of the Iliad because it opened on his wife giving birth to their son the bond between those three characters is very compelling you really badly want to see Odysseus reunited with his family it barely even hurts that the son does get smidge whiny as a teenager but then they do say that you should have cheese with your wine so that is not going to be the last pun in this video and the ending feels like an incredible culmination of what came before and it is deeply satisfying i will not give away here if it is happy or sad but one of the best endings of of any like any miniseries, any movie, any TV show, just incredible. And personally, I've never lost interest along the way. And my father loves the poem. Also has, I, th I think, let's see, I've watched it twice on my own, twice with him. And yeah, we never lose interest. And some viewers do. Now. And one of the benefits of the miniseries length is that it, you know, it gets most of the poem in there, although there are some omissions and changes. And let's see. now, some of the gods are shown as having a very casual relationship with their godly powers. It really gets across that they've been existing with their immense power for an obscene amount of time and basically take them for granted. Now, I will, 
I'm willing to grant that there is a lot of smiling and chuckling and such in their performances, and it is perhaps at least a little bit too much, at least at times. And yeah, at times the, some of the gods almost taunt human beings about how much better they are than them, which is very true to how the Greek gods were seen. And this does get across that some of them did quote-unquote believe in at least some people. We see that Athena, an absolutely perfectly cast as Isabella Rossellini, clearly has, you know, believes in Odysseus being a great man. And... Yeah, and the... I will go with the humanoid creatures, you know, featured in this, largely get across what they're meant to. And as for... Yeah, so Odysseus himself comes across as both very full of himself, you know, yeah, among the things he comes across as. is full of himself, very sly, not, not Stallone, but cunning, I told you there was going to be more puns, devoted to taking care of his men and his family. Armando Sante is not a great actor, but he does possess the ability to really project a lot of passion. And he has a lot of charisma. I understand the perspective of those that say that he does not have the range to convey the mixed emotions that the character feels during the journey. I don't think I really agree with it, but I, I see where they're coming from, sure. And his is a face that we love to see him triumph and we empathize deeply with when in pain. And for as hyper-masculine as he can be in a lot of this and a lot of his roles, he's not afraid to cry when the character calls for it. And this is a miniseries which is not afraid to show men caring deeply for other men, not worried that, you know, people will think the men are gay, as if there was anything wrong with that, but, you know, some people seem to think so. And his wife comes across as being in a lot of pain from not having him around. And his men are very clearly driven to do their best for Odysseus. You know, they're, they're, we see them as being flawed in, in various ways. And, you know, the, but united in wanting to, yeah, do their best for Odysseus. Eric Roberts, as expected, makes for a very slimy suitor very appropriate and he balances being slimy with just enough charm that you could understand why some you know some women would find him appealing not perhaps not penelope but i suppose if you don't know the epic poem that requires a little bit of explaining while odysseus is away you know a lot of people basically think that he's dead so a number of suitors come to Penelope and demand that she choose one of them to marry and basically she says that you know she, she doesn't really want to but they keep pushing for it and yeah Eric Roberts plays one of these suitors and just yeah very very slimy and some of the gods and creatures are played by performers who have the appearance physically of what they're depicting, but not quite the acting ability. And, you know, I would perhaps say that the, the, the most prominent case of this is the sumo wrestler portraying the Cyclops, who definitely has a, a presence and is very physically imposing. And honestly would be, even if not for the trick photography that makes him look, you know, he's, he's like as tall as two or maybe even three men stacked on top of each other. But you can tell that he's not really an actor and they do perhaps show the, his, his face for a little bit too long at a time for it to remain completely convincing. I'm still not 100% certain if it's like animatronic or prosthetics. I mean, I guess it probably is prosthetic, but anyway, yeah. That is, you know, 
slightly awkward, some, something you kind of just have to accept as you're watching it. Now, some say that, I've, I've seen at least one review criticize Vanessa Williams' performance, that she has this alien quality to how she delivers her lines. I don't know, I mean, some of the time, sure, I don't know that... I think it works. I I think basically... I suppose... Yeah, it's not a spoiler to say that she... She portrays someone who doesn't meet a lot of people and as such, there's maybe a little bit of, like, alienation. There's, you know, the, the way she, you know, I'm, I wouldn't quite say, it's not quite a, an, like, an autist As, Asperger's syndrome kind of, I, I don't know what I, exactly I would compare it with, but, yeah, and an an alien quality, but not alien in the way that it feels like she, you know, like like a, a cheesy extraterrestrial that is only mimicking human speech. More like someone who simply almost never speaks with other people, so she doesn't quite know how a voice is supposed to, you know, what what do you you know, what, what, uh, yeah, you know, the, the way we speak is very based on speaking with other people, you know, people who don't spend a lot of time talking with other people can sort of develop a somewhat unnatural way of speaking, and it feels like that's what happened with her. It, I think it was a deliberate choice, because there's not really anybody else who speaks quite like that. I suppose one thing that I should briefly say, the, the Cyclops, I don't know with absolute certainty, but I think he might be dubbed. And and certainly it seems like when he moves his lips, the the it's it's possible that the the sumo wrestler himself dubbed, although I I would guess that it was someone else who dubbed it, but it really does feel like He's not quite speaking his lines. As, you know, when, when we see his lips move, he's either not speaking his lines or the way he's speaking them is slightly off from what we're actually hearing. And, you know, the, this was before, like, today, they would probably either shoot around it or, like, use CG to make it to where he, you know, depending on the budget and amount of time they had and such. But back then, yeah, they, you know, we, we see it for a while, and, yeah, it, it does feel... This is also why I say I'm not 100% certain that it's not animatronic, because the way he moves his lips can be kind of unnatural. It, it I guess... I think I would go so far as to say that it doesn't completely look like his, he's forming words. It looks like he's opening and closing his mouth, but it doesn't look, yeah, it, it doesn't look like his lips are, you know, moving in a way that would form words. So, yeah, I, I, I'm not 100% certain, but... Certainly, if it was animatronic, that is something that you encounter there, and that's, you know, one of the reasons that a lot of the time when animatronics are used, they purposefully don't use them for characters who are supposed to speak and where we see their lips move. You know, it's more for, like, creatures who maybe have to give off, like, creature noises, but not form words with their lips. Now, but yeah, to, to briefly, Vanessa Williams' character, 
you know, it, it conveys that she's not used to speaking with other people. She's, she's capable of speech, but she's not used to speaking to people, and she is not playing a human character. So there is that also, you know, they, they, they do a really good job making all of these, like, you are never confused as to whether what you're seeing is human or humanoid. You, you, in, in all of this, you never mistake a human for a god, or a god for a human. Now, let's see. Considering how many important relationships there are in this miniseries between characters, it is very impressive that they manage to add weight to every single character and relationship. At first, you might not realize that a character or a relationship is that important, but as you, you know, as they get more speaking lines, more screen time over the course of it, you realize they are going to be important. And by the time it is necessary for you to care deeply about them, you do. I mean, there's over a dozen, maybe two full dozen characters in this that you are supposed to care about. And yeah, I, I, I care about all of them. I, I really would not have thought that was possible to fit into, like, in an entire season of a TV show, sure, I, I don't see a problem with that, but this is, you know, I, I want to say two hours and 51 and a half minutes, or 52 if you count the end credits, that's a lot of characters, that's a lot to fit in, keeping in mind, Odysseus has a number of stops along the way also, you know, so it's, and, and with that, even some of the, like, at times, this is supposed to convey that Odysseus has gotten to a place, gotten into a situation that he might never get out of. You know, that's part of the, the thrill of the poem is this, that, you know, how do you get out of that? How, the, how on earth, you know, that, that sounds like an impossible situation to get out of. And it manages to convey, you know, even though some of these places don't, there's not that much screen time devoted to them, but, you know, for a mastery of cinematic language and quite good pacing, they managed to make it feel like the, the, like this is a never ending circumstance. And they're also, you know, they, they have these two hours and 52 and a half minutes to convey that. I suppose I shouldn't give away exactly how long. Yeah, if you know, if you know the poem, you know that Odysseus is gone for quite some time. And yeah, it manages to give. You know, and obviously, excuse me. Part of that is something as banal as old age makeup. You know, but no, they actually they manage to convey like when you, as you're watching it, you can kind of feel, okay, clearly years have passed by now, or when, you know, when someone says, or, you know, an obvious thing is that Telemachus, like, like I said, he's, I, oh, no, I'm, I, I believe he is an infant when Odysseus leaves for the events of the Iliad, and, yeah, you know, it'll, it'll cut back, it'll cut from Odysseus, back to Penelope and Telemachus, and you'll see, you know, Telemachus has clearly grown several years older since last time we saw him. And there wasn't a single time where, you know, it would cut back and I would be like, there's no way it's been several years. Each time it felt, you know, it felt like that was the reality of the, yeah. And the actors tend to do a really good job managing to make their lines sound natural and, and work through their performance, even though, you know, it's it's not quite the, the, they don't speak exactly the way that it's in the poem, perhaps, it's it's been a, or actually, did I ever read, I, I don't think I ever have read it. I think what it is, is my father said that they don't speak exactly the way they do in the poem. 
but it's written in a way that sounds, you know, it, it, they don't, it doesn't sound like it was written and recorded in 1997. You know, it's, it sounds as though somehow in 1997 they managed to find footage of something that happened, you know, thousands of years ago. So, yeah, it, it's very impressive. These are, and, and some of these actors, you know, English is not their first language, so it's it's very impressive that they managed to make it come across. Yeah. And there are a number of characters who you see in, in different situations, so you see different aspects to their character. Now, I have not seen any other adaptation fit in this much of the poem, nor make it all of it this epic. You know, I've I've seen a couple of other adaptations. I haven't seen all of them, and it tends to be that at least some of it, it's okay. You know, but it's nowhere near. But here, it's it all like, if they had decided to turn one of these things into a movie, you could st you know it would still be a huge event. And again, somehow it's not exhausting. It's it's unreal. And the cinematography really gets across the scope. And the editing, I will say, can at times be a little awkward. Honestly, when I wrote that into my notes, it had been a while since I last watched. It really isn't very much. Yeah, honestly, it only happens a few times. It's just that there are a few times where it happens several times within a short space of time. It's 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 maybe especially bad with the Cyclops because there is this, you know, they use effects to make it appear that the Cyclops is much bigger, even though obviously in real life it's it's a guy. You know, it's a sumo wrestler, so he's big. He's got a lot. I don't mean that as an insult I you know he's he has a very real like you you really don't want to mess with this guy you know and but but yeah when they filmed it it's not like he actually was that much bigger than the other performers and that can uh, you can kind of tell that you know they have to edit in a way that the the when the Cyclops performer was filmed and when the others were filmed, that was done separately. You know, this I mean it, it accomplishes some of the same the 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 Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit also have size differences, but they had a bigger budget and more time to, to you know plus more advanced you know not that much more advanced technology but slightly more advanced you know special effects tend to you know it's it's really exponential how much better it gets and and yeah here you know with with the cyclops it gets awkward other than that That is actually almost the only time when I really think about it. Yeah, honestly, I don't I don't think there really is any other time where it's where it's like bad. There are, there are a few places where you can kind of tell, but largely they they yeah, and and you know, other than that, yeah, the editing is really good. The you know, like like I said, the 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 moment to moment kind of stuff and uh, how the the whole thing is like you know the the structure of it all you know th this would this would not work anywhere near as well if it was if a lot of it was flashback now let's see the and there is some 
I suppose I shouldn't give away details, but there is some animation used in, in the special effects. And, you know, they, they clearly put a lot of effort into it. And, yeah, see, again, when I, when I wrote these notes from memory, I remembered it as not being that great. But, honestly, it is quite, you know, obviously it's not going to hold up 23 years later. You know, the, the very little special effects can stand up to that kind of scrutiny. But it, it looked good back then, and it does still look very good. And, yeah, the, the special effects, you know, obviously I have to say, you know, considering budget and when it came out. But even without that, no, it's, it's very good. And it doesn't rely, you know, a lot on, like, unconvincing CG. You know, there were a lot of 90s movies that had CG and relied way too heavily on it. And this one really does, you know, there, there is CG and some of it is a little, not, not completely convincing, but the, the no, I, I would say most of the effects in this are really, really great. There are a couple where you can tell, you know, the, the, some of the creatures I saw at least one review say that he thought it was kind of obvious that at least one of them was a puppet. I don't quite agree with him. I, I, I think I see what he means. But it, it, no, I felt it was convincing. I don't know, maybe he watches a lot more stuff. The, you know, maybe he has a keener eye, but I would say they managed to, you know, to, to incorporate it very convincingly. And there are some very memorable choices of, you know, for, for the, the CG and such. One of them is that Poseidon is at times depicted as a face in the waves of the ocean. So, you know, you'll see, you'll see the wave, cra you know, crashing. And as you do, there will be a face and you'll see the lips move in perfect sync. Here it is in perfect sync with the voice. You know, I've, I've seen others basically depict him as like humanoid and made of water. And don't get me wrong, that is interesting as well. But I don't feel that fully gets across his control of the ocean and how foreign and other he is. You know, you do not mistake him for a human being in disguise in this miniseries. He is a force of nature, very literally. And there are shots where the same wave will crash. And at first, like, his face will start up here. And then later, it'll appear down here. And it really gets across that he is not bound by the same laws as men. Like, he can defy the laws of physics in a way that just, like, that really, you know, just, you know, just think about that for a second. The ocean is completely in his control. If he would like to, he can appear as a face on a massive wave you know, I don't know, 20 or 30 meters far and tall and just, you know, ju just to to show you that, the, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that he's literally all all of the time, he's all of the ocean, but he can, if, if he would like to, just to remind you how vast he is and how fully at his mercy you are when at sea, that's something he can do, you know, and his powerful booming voice also really gets across how massive and powerful he is. And there's this sort of filter thing they do where, like, as he speaks, it kind of, you know, like the, I don't know, I, I, maybe I'm making it sound a little more complex than it is, but it just sounds, it sounds like it is the ocean that his voice is coming out of almost, you know, with it very, very nicely done. And I haven't seen any other 
this creative version of it, you know. You know, I, I, I want to say, was it maybe Xena where he would appear? Yeah, the, the Xena TV show, he would appear as, you know, also massive. Don't get me wrong, he was very tall in that. And he had the sort of regal scent, you know. But, yeah, he's a humanoid shape. And I just don't feel like it completely conveys, like, I suppose taking a human... A humanoid shape is something a god would do if he wanted to appeal to a, a human being. If he wanted to say, you know, okay, let's let's have a conversation. But that's not who that's not what Poseidon's trying to do in this, you know, in in the Odyssey. He's trying to convey and I mean he's basically over and over telling Odysseus, you are nothing compared to me. You are a tiny insect. You know, if if things go your way, it's because we, the gods, allow it to, or maybe even empower you. And for you to, for you to not acknowledge how powerful we are is such an insult, you know. Thinking about it, okay, I can, I can remember one other time where there is a, a creature where you can tell that the effect yeah fair enough the the I don't think it's that bad but you can kind of tell that what you're watching isn't happening exactly the way it's being shown and you can kind of tell that it is yeah I don't know I for that they should maybe have altered it a little bit to where it would to where it was something that was easier to film in a way that was convincing but it's still really not it's it's not bad it's it's good it's just not incredible and there's some really great stunt work like some of the some of the stunt work in this is in Incredible. Like I, I know that that wasn't. I'm aware that they didn't actually make a human being go through what I just saw, but wow, it was convincing. To to when you know looking at it, it was yeah. And a lot of this is filmed on location, you know. Uh, Let's see if I can browse it. Malta and Turkey. And there are some incredible sites. Just gorgeous nature in this. And at times they are literally sailing a functioning ship. And the sets don't tend to feel like sets. It feels very authentic. And you'll remember the beautiful places you see in this long after watching. You know, the, the sets have a scope to them where it doesn't feel, you know, sometimes when you when you watch, a, you know, a Hollywood movie from way back in the day, okay, this, this is a set. It's like, that's, that's not real. That's a set, you know, and here it really, did, like, I know that at least some of it must be sets. But it kind of feels like they found places that were like this for real. And now, for sure, some of this has to be sets. But it's, it's very, very impressive. And the action scenes move fast. They're, they're frequently grand and very carefully choreographed. Like, at the very start, you, you see the you know, some of the, the battle that takes place in the Iliad, some of the, the, you know, Troy battle stuff, and wow, it is, yeah, like, it's, it's very, very convincing and impressive, and yeah, I, I mean, it is, if you showed this to me, 
and I didn't know, excuse me, that it was a mini series. If you told me, like, if it, yeah, let, you know, I mean, this is the the length of this compared to the length of the the ah, give me a second the Lord of the Rings movies. You know the yeah more or less the. There, there are a few things, but largely I wouldn't be able to tell for sure that this was a miniseries. I might, yeah, yeah. And when this is meant to be scary, it legitimately is. Like, the Cyclops is both creepy and exudes strength. You really believe that this bunch of able warriors can't easily defeat him. And several of the creatures and events are also legitimately scary. You quickly come to realize this is a world where magic and godly powers can ruin lives, even take them at the drop of a hat, and where human beings are at the mercy of forces much stronger than them. And the villains are ones that we really love to hate. You know, Poseidon out of pettiness. Just to make an example of Odysseus, slows him and his men down a lot, simply to punish hubris, and I've already mentioned Eric Roberts, uh, you know, as a suitor, other suitors as well, like, we despise them, they are just, yeah, and... It's easy to follow which is good because a lot happens and you know if, if you go into this not already knowing the epic poem there's a lot to follow a lot of power sets and relationships to take in you know like if you're watching this video and you haven't yet watched this or any other adaptation you'll want to know you'll want to have a basic understanding of some of the gods honestly i I think I would maybe recommend reading a summary of the poem before watching this. I, I don't think I would go into it without knowing any of this stuff. I don't know, I, and, and for sure you'll want to know who some of the gods are and, you know, the, the let's see, the, the, the importance of the Iliad and who Odysseus was and such. Now, the the score is excellent. It, you know, it, it really adds to the epic feel of it. Very evocative. And, you know, the, I would say some of the comedy and humor is a little awkward in in this. I, I don't think it works completely. I forget how much of it is from the the poem and how much of it was added, but yeah, a, a little bit of it. And not to a very bit. Like, I've heard many say that the worst thing to watch is a bad comedy. I don't know that I would 100% agree with that, but for sure it's one of the worst, and this never gets, it never gets anywhere near that bad. There's just a few jokes where it's like, that's, that's not really that funny. Excuse me. But that's all for that. And some of it is very funny. And, you know, so, so yeah, this is an adventure drama. It, on IMDb, it's listed as adventure, drama, and fantasy, those three genres. I would say it delivers quite well on all three of them. Now, IMDb's more like this list compares this to various other things. There were only, you know, of the, let's see, is it six? I forget how many it is total. I want to say six. Let's go with six. The only ones that I had watched are Merlin, the miniseries from 1998, which is fine. I, you know, if you're 
picking miniseries, I would definitely recommend this over that one. That one has a lot of really cringy comedy, and it's just a lot of the stuff in there doesn't. It's not very effective. It just it feels like they felt like they had to fit in this stuff, but they didn't really care that much about some of these events. It's just it's there because it's important to the plot, but it's not like. In this, nothing feels like it's just there. But anyway, that was one of them. And the other thing that I had seen was Troy. I have to admit, I I barely remember that. I think I only watched it once. I remember liking it, but I really don't remember very much of that. But, you know, one major thing is that the movie Troy, let's go with, is not that interested in the gods, where... You know, in this, the gods play an important role. Now, this can get pretty violent and gory and graphic and bloody. It's a violent story, and this doesn't shy away from that. Although it does perhaps tend to show the results of violence more than the acts of violence. Like, you'll you see more bodies with arrows sticking out of them then you'll see arrows pierce human bodies, for example. And this does a, a good job of conveying how little power human beings have in this world of gods and creatures, and you also get, you know, really get how different the life home in Ithaca, which, you know, it cuts to a number of times, you know, it's much safer and more domestic. And, yeah, so as far as pacing, it does a great job of keeping you interested throughout, you know, again, two hours and 52 and a half minutes. On several occasions, I've watched this from start to finish in a single sitting, never losing interest in it, even though even the very first time I knew how it's going to end. And a lot of the things that happen along the way, you know, I, I didn't know exactly, you know, some of the finer details might be different, but you know, in broad strokes, you know, this is one of those things, you know, it, it's kind of like when people adapt Shakespeare, like, sure, there are some that take it in a wild direction, but a lot of the time, perhaps most of the time, they really don't change the, the, the core details, you know, because that's, it's just very rarely done, you know, so, yeah, when you sit down to watch an adaptation, of the Odyssey, you'll know a lot of what's going to happen, and yeah, I, I would not have thought that, you know, but also I, I really want to make sure to note the times where I didn't watch it in a single sitting were not because I got bored or the person I was watching with it, years like my father got bored, it's simply that it can be difficult today to find three hours in a row to sit and watch something. But if you do have that time, that this is one of the ones we're doing so will be very rewarding. Although I will say, if you start to feel that it's too cheesy early on, it's not really going to get better. You know, you might not like the whole thing. But yeah, so the... Let's see... But yeah, you know, it's it's well worth watching the whole thing. For some reason, the DVD cover lists... Oh, wow, I had actually forgot. Yeah. There's one place on the cover where it lists the time fairly accurately. It claims it's 2 hours and 55 minutes. But then there's two places where it just says, in all caps, three hours with an exclamation point at oh and they yeah they're actually the the they put it on like an orange background so it's like a warning sign i mean were they worried that people would return the dvd saying it's way too long or just yeah Because it doesn't look like it's supposed to appeal to you. It looks like it's supposed to be a warning. Now, 
I have watched a number of adaptations of The Odyssey, and this is by far my favorite, and that's saying a lot, because some of the others I do really love. Though I used to have, I don't think it was my own copy, but I used to, yeah, like a friend of my father's he lent me a VHS copy, and it was really, really, you know, I, I liked it a lot, but yeah, it's it has nothing on this. And let's see. You know, the, the, it's somewhat unique how much of the Odyssey this adaptation fits in, how well it does at distinguishing these very different adventures along the way. You know, some places are scary and overpowering, others are alluring. And, yeah, I would definitely say the best thing about it is how much of the Odyssey it fits in and how just emotionally involving and epic it is. And so the worst aspect, for many, it will be the cheese factor. And for purists, keeping in mind that I use that term in a neutral way, not as a negative or derogatory term, it might be the details that they changed. And, and stuff they admitted, and others yet might be frustrated that they did include so much of the poem. I've, I've heard people say that, you know, some of these places are basically the same. Why, why does he have to go to a place like that more than once? You know, if, if you don't like Greek mythology, this is not for you. You know, the, the, don't even, don't think for a second that the, this is not going to convert you. If you, if you already don't like Greek mythology, this is not going to change your mind. You're going to think it's even worse after watching this. I love mythology. You know, I love Norse mythology and Greek mythology. Probably others I didn't think to write down, but, you know, the... the yeah, this is one of my favorite. You know, it's, it's not quite... I mean, if you're asking what is the best... Overall, I'd probably say that my absolute favorite adaptation of mythology would be the fairly recent, I want to say, was it 2019 it came out, Valhalla, you know, Danish Valhalla movie, but this might be the second. I think this is a close second, yeah. And, you know, before the first time I watched this, I was somewhat worried about the effects and honestly, they were way better than I had thought they were. And I was most looking forward to the level of detail of the poem and, you know, being included in this adaptation and it lived up to it. And there are some exceptions and I suppose, yeah, for those who don't want to wait for a really long time, I'm going to briefly talk about, you know, stuff that's in the poem that either isn't in this or is different, but I'm also going to talk about some of the really positives. About, but, you know, until you see me lower my index finger, spoilers for this adaptation and the poem. The Greek, you know, the, the sirens are nowhere in this. And the Greek gods, with the exception of Poseidon and Athena, are barely in this at all, which is very unlike the other versions I've seen. And it is kind of a strange decision, considering that one of the main morals of the story is to respect the gods, how important they are. Meanwhile, the realm of the dead, Scylla and Charybdis, Circe and Calypso, are all present and deeply memorable. Uh, you know, the... the the designs, like the realm of the dead, is horrifying. It is just chilling. You you can really understand why this is a place to fear. And you know the 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 Cyclops, Scylla, and Charybdis scenes are filmed and edited like scenes in modern horror movies. I haven't seen this kind of approach in any other adaptation of the epic poem, but it's the exact right approach. And, Honestly, some of those were, you know, aimed at, honestly, even children, which 
is very strange considering how violent the poem is, but yeah. And yeah. So no more spoilers for this adaptation. So I would say that let's see. Yeah. I would recommend this to those passionate about the poem and passionate about Greek mythology in general. If you don't care that much about the poem and mythology in general, you probably will find this to be overlong and, you know, I've seen several reviews where it's people who, you know, it was used as a teaching aid. You know, it's, it's a good visual aid for teachers since it's so accurate to the original and it's perhaps a bit more exciting than just sitting and reading words not to you know I love reading but I do think that there is something about an adaptation of a visual adaptation of something written that's very appealing but yeah in case you're wondering I did not watch this in class nor am I a teacher I bought the DVD because I love mythology and yeah, so I give this a good, strong, eight petty gods slowing down Odysseus out of ten. And yeah, you know, if you have a chance to watch this and it sounds at all appealing, yeah, I would, I would recommend, you know, yeah. I don't even know, does this, can you stream this since... Do people still buy DVDs? And anyway, that brings us to the spoiler section. From here on out, lots and lots of spoilers for the miniseries. And I am just going to really quickly note. There we go. Wow. A full hour of review this time. That brings us to the disclaimers. If you don't care about these disclaimers, I'm trying to keep them short and relevant, but your mileage may vary. You can skip right ahead to the section of your choice in the description box. I often try to talk very fast during the disclaimers, since a lot of it is very standard information. I'm not going to keep speaking as fast as I sometimes do during this section once I get into the rest of the video itself. With that said, please do note that some of the specific discussion of the movie may be in this section. Now, I realize this video is long. I'm going to try to do what I can to make it worth your time. And I, yeah, I suppose I should say, in addition to spoilers for this miniseries, the, I will also spoil the poem, since there are a few things that are in the poem that are not in this adaptation. Now, I, let's see. I'm not currently planning on reviewing, you know, doing, doing videos on other adaptations of mythology. This is, I think this might actually be the only adaptation I have, which, yeah, I know, even though I love it, it's, it's oh, it's, sorry, I do own a VHS of the old Danish Valhalla, you know, the 1986 animated Valhalla adaptation, but I have already done videos on that. Did I do a review? I get actually that might have been back when I wasn't doing reviews, when I was only doing thoughts. But anyway, I don't I don't have any other adaptations of I, I don't think. If I find them, maybe I will do more videos, but don't you know, don't get your hopes up. I I'm not currently planning on it. Anyway, now I don't have a problem with violence and gore in general. I think it's one of my favorite horror movies in ancient general. Also, Chrono Books, The Fly, Video Drum, etc. And I don't have a problem with film sexuality, nudity, disturbing my setting material in general. Monsters are one of my favorite movies. I. Let's see. Instead of me quoting all the lines I love from this miniseries, let me just say here I loved every line they put in the IMDb memorable quote section, so you could just look that up instead of me sitting here quoting all of them. And let's see, I, right, so the rest of this video is not a review, it's a series of, well, thoughts. Some of this analysis, some of this MST3K riff tracks and other jokes, the, the, probably most of those will be in the, you know, thoughts that I had while watching section. 
and yeah, those thoughts are in chronological order. You would think of it as a running commentary, like tweeting or like, and the section after that is thoughts that I had before watching. And finally, I will get into, in the final section, I get into stuff I think it's worthwhile to get into on Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic, IMDb, and Wikipedia. And let's see. Yeah, so I don't have, I don't think I ever have read the, the poem itself. Certainly if I have, it's been many years. So if I say something that's just ridiculous compared to what's in the poem, that's why. And let's see. So yeah, I I may have first watched this in 2005, possibly earlier. I definitely watched it by then. I wasn't writing text reviews before 2003, so it's possible I've watched it before then and on and just rewatch. But anyway, I'm certain that I've watched it at least four times, including, you know, today, right, you know, yeah, right before now doing this vlog. And let's see. I'm afraid I don't remember which of the other versions I've seen. I, I know one of them was animated, and I want to say it was like 80 minutes, which... I don't think that one had a lot of weight to a lot of it. I think it was basically just trying to get all the details in so that kids, who, I, th I think it was basically like, if you have ADD and you're supposed to know what's in the poem, watch this instead of trying to read it, you know, something like that. Now, let's see, that brings us to the next section. And... There we go. Yep. Notes taken while watching. Let's see. So yeah, you know, to expand a little, I, you know, I did already talk about in the review, the first thing we see, but to expand a little, I didn't think that this should go in the review itself. One of the first things we see is Odysseus carrying home his pregnant wife as she's about to give birth soothing her with his words, really setting up the character of Odysseus. And, you know, Odysseus holds newborn Telemachus up and tells him, everything the light touches is our kingdom. And it's such a great, you know, the... Okay, so, yeah, with this one I will just briefly read the the quote i was forced to leave my home not knowing if i was going to see my wife or child again i am odysseus king of ithaca and this is my story that is an excellent way to open it really sets up the weight of him leaving home and odysseus prays to athena right away setting up you know how like he he prays to her frequently and she gives him aid Excuse me. And let's see. This. Uh, let's see. Okay, right now I'm, I'm forgetting if it was verbally or visually, but Odysseus indicates the tree that their bed was built from, or around, or you know, so, something like that. But the end of the movie doesn't pay off on that setup, similar to how the Cyclops no man bit is set up, but not paid off on. I don't know if they ended up having to cut and then they just left in the setup, but it is a little odd that these setups, you know, they, they included the setups. I don't know if they maybe didn't understand why the setup is is there. I don't know, That that is... If I, you know, to be brutally honest, I was a little bit disappointed that, you know, I, I mean, Odysseus says, my name is No Man. No Man. And then the, the, ah, let me think. You know, the, when, when the Cyclops is, is angry, he does yell, 
no man has blinded me. But then we're supposed to, you know, at that point, the other Cyclops, Cy Cyclopses, are supposed to say, I don't remember the, the verbatim, but they're supposed to make fun of him for, you know, for saying, oh, no man has blinded you, you know, so you're not really in trouble, I guess, you know, and yeah, it just, it feels weird that he's, you know, the setup is there, but it's not paid off on. And in the poem, Odysseus, you know, proves to Penelope that he is Odysseus by telling her our bed was built from a tree, around a tree, something like that. You know, I, I think it is that she says, she's testing him by saying, move my bed, move our bed or something. And he says, I cannot move our bed. It was built from a tree, around a tree, whatever. And the, the ending of this also does, like, visually, it, you know, it does show the, the tree there, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, maybe they felt that it was, that they should, maybe they felt that their payoff was sufficient. I don't know. It, it feels a little... I think it would have been good for it to have the, the... I think maybe part of why the payoff to the Cyclops... Maybe they didn't want to have to create several more Cyclops just for that brief bit. Yeah. It's, you know... Well, I, I heard someone... I don't remember who, but I heard someone who makes movies say you're not cutting you know if you're cutting the movie right there should be blood on the floor and that's a very graphic way to put it but you know yeah yeah i mean basically you have to and and kill your darlings is another good one i'm i feel like that's pr probably what happened here because that obviously it takes them a lot of time to build any one of these things. And, you know, they gotta build. I mean, let's yeah, let's just very briefly so the effects people have to create the 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 Cyclops' head or face. They have to you know, yeah, and they, they have to make him look much bigger. They have to have. They actually. They also have to have separate props. You know, I I really like the detail that he picks his teeth with the sword of that one of Odysseus' warriors that he straight up bit the head off. That's that's horrifying. I don't understand the people who say that this isn't violent enough for them. I I really do not understand them. But whatever, that's their thing, and. Yeah, so, you know, among that, they have to build the, the sea creature that eats the soothsayer. They have to, you know, there's Scylla, Charybdis. You know, there's the prosthetics and, and stuff for the, the people getting impaled and killed in, in graphic ways. You know, there's there's a lot that they have to make, you know, for this. So, I really don't blame them for saying, you want us to build you know, another, it, it would, you know, there have to be at least one more Cyclops, even, even if you say, oh, only one Cyclops, you know, and this is where, you know, the, at least one of the versions I saw was animated, and, you know, yeah, I, th I think we saw a couple of Cyclops, I, I don't think they look very different from each other, because in animation, if you, you know, you, you can animate several, you know, it doesn't take as much as it does to for live action building this stuff from uh, yeah and on the boat on the way to troy we start getting some characterization for the men and odysseus sees athena who explains to him that she she wants him to defeat the the trojans and you know the the ah uh, you know, she, she wants his name to go down in history, and he doesn't feel the need for that. And the lighting on Athena really highlights that she is a god. The light on her is much brighter 
than on any of the human beings. And yet it's not in such a way where it looks bad. You know, I, I really would not have thought it was possible. But yeah, like, she is glowing. She is, like, you can tell from looking at, like, if you knew nothing about mythology and you sat down and watched this, the moment you see Athena on the boat, you're like, she is not human. 100%. There's something about her that is beyond humanity. And some really good setup on, you know, she, you know, she says, oh, that guy, his curiosity, curiosity will be his downfall. He's the one who opens the, the bag of wind, which wind bag is one that blows them off course, of course. I can't help it. I love puns. Well, I could help it, but I don't, don't get your hopes up. I've seen some reviewers say that the Troy part is too small a part of the miniseries. Others say it's too big. I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm in a bit of a, a Goldilocks situation. I think it's the, the right amount. I think if it was shorter, then the, the weight of that would not quite hit. You know, I mean, this, it took them 10 years. It's not given that much screen time. It, like I said, the review, they managed to give it enough weight, even though it doesn't have a lot of screen time. I, I guess I understand those who say that it is that it should be even bigger. I mean, I think, I don't think it would be a good thing for this to be longer than it is. You know. Don't get me wrong, I wish that the sirens were there for one thing, but I do think that it is it has a good length. Yeah, the sirens, that might also be a thing of like, I mean, they look human, they look fairly human if I recall, but it would still be some, you know, effects work there, I can imagine. Anyway. And Hector challenges Achilles in the old Greek tradition of smack talk. Yes, now you know where WrestleMania gets from. I, I should briefly say, me making these jokes, it doesn't mean that I don't love the miniseries or that it didn't work. Like, I, I was like, ah, oh, that, that guy's going down. That is, you know, ugh. get him, Achilles. You know, destroy that guy. I understand the argument against all the wounds on the body of Achilles when the story says that his heel was the only part that was at all vulnerable, but they do have to convey that he's dead. Movie shorthand, movie, you know, visual shorthand is a wounded body not moving. You know, like, hypothetically, if you saw his body and there was, like, I, is is it an arrow that pierces his Achilles? I, I forget. But anyway, if that was what there was, it just wouldn't convey as effectively, visually, he's dead. You know, I, I realize that if you know mythology, you'd be like, he's dead. But a lot of people would still, you know, it, we'd look at it and in our mind we'd be going, well... Okay, so he's going to need crutches from now on, but he's not dead. You know, it's just... And... Yeah, so when the soothsayer is killed, we see our first creature less than 20 minutes into the miniseries. I can understand why some people say that you can tell that it's not real. I do still think they do a pretty good job on it, and it is a very scary way to die. I mean, you see his arms literally sticking out of the water, struggling to reemerge. That's legitimately incredibly disturbing. But, you know, that that is... Okay, I yeah, I should briefly say... I considered doing so, but I ended up not doing so. In the review itself, the two, you know... I can understand saying that Scylla is, you know, clearly a, a puppet and not real... And I would say that the, I, I don't remember what they call it, but the thing that kills the soothsayer, 
you can kind of tell that's not, you know, they, they have to cut around. I think the idea is supposed to be that it's moving up from under and basically swallowing him and pulling him down. But they don't have a thing that can do that, so they kind of just, they film where he's standing, then they film where he, he's slightly covered, they cut, slightly more covered, slightly more covered, cut, you know, th this, and you can kind of tell, you know, I, th I think it's cutting to reaction shots, but you can still tell, you know, it's barely moving, and I think they should maybe have just had it be that he, like, sinks into the sea, Instead, like, yeah, so, but, you know, they, they do, I mean, on the other hand, it is very, like, Poseidon points to, I killed the soothsayer, and that's more clear if a sea creature comes out and kills him, so, yeah. And, let's see, yeah, and so Odysseus defies the gods, and Poseidon says he will never reach Ithaca. And, yeah, so we cut back, we meet 10-year-old Telemachus. Telemachus, I want to say. It's for, yeah. And we see that he has his father's sense of adventure. And, like I said in the review, I mean, it conveys, yeah, you buy that 10 years have passed, even though not very much screen time has passed. And, let's see. And Penelope and... I'm sorry, I forget her name, but Odysseus's mother discuss parenting and the possibility of Penelope remarrying, moving on from Odysseus. It would have been easy for them to turn either of these women into a negative stereotype, but they're both making good points. I would argue that, you know, excuse me, the, the, you know, perhaps not Penelope, at least at first, we, the viewer, realize Odysseus's mother does care. Excuse me, you know, in her opinion, she's not being cold. She's being realistic. And let's see. And the men start getting restless and angry at each other because they haven't reached Ithaca yet. You know, they've been lost in the fog for so long. One of them even says, it's not Ithaca, which I'm pretty sure is ancient Greek for, are we there yet? I found plenty of cheese. The Odyssey mini series has been brought to you by goat cheese. Look, they gotta work in the ads somehow. And one of them compares the size of his own foot to one of the f foot footsteps. I'm going with footsteps of the Cyclops, excellent foreshadowing. And Odysseus makes sure that his men don't provoke the Cyclops and talks to him, getting some information from him. My mother was a sea nymph, which is of course ancient Greek for, my mother was a saint. And the Cyclops chuckles and eats one of Odysseus's men and uses a sword as a toothpick. Just that's such a yeah, you know that right there. Like to us, a sword. You know, back then certainly, sword is like a, that's gonna kill someone. You know, that's that's you know, you got a sword in your hand, you're good to go. You're gonna you can go out and kill someone. And to the to the Cyclops, it's this tiny little thing. He uses it as a toothpick. You know, I I don't. It's it's a hard to get. Le more non-threatening than a toothpick, you know. I mean, okay, so, like, if it's in the hands of, like, Bullseye or Hawkeye or something, maybe a toothpick. Is that a Hawkeye thing? It's certainly a Bullseye thing, you know. But to most people, it's it's not exactly, yeah. And Odysseus says for the Cyclops to eat him next, but if he does, he will lose all the secrets in his head. Very clever. And, it, you know, it, it gets across this thing of Odysseus was, I think they say that he is the first human being to use his head, to, to really think his way out of situations. Because all the others are like, we gotta rush him. And it's like, did you see what he just did? He took one of our men and just, you know, 
there's there's no way they would be able to defeat the the Cyclops if they just all went at him. And Odysseus sharpens the stick and readies it for blinding the Cyclops. And a lot of the stuff the miniseries deals with, sorry, like a lot of the stuff the miniseries deals with, the blinding of the Cyclops is very, or sorry, the Cyclops in general is very brutal. You know, him biting the head off one of Odysseus' men, them blinding him, him, you know, when, when they're trying to get out of the cave opening and he... I don't think you even see the guy in his hand. You just see the massive hand. It's like a point of view shot. And the hand just fills the entire screen. You know, blackens. And you hear the, the scream. It's just horrifying. And I, I remember I, I read a review where someone criticized, you know, the idea is supposed to be they all put, you know, they, they get by him by dressing up as his sheep. But it, that only, you know, only like one or two of them do do that in the miniseries. I really think that's it works well when you're verbally telling the story to say, and they dressed up like sheep. But it would actually be kind of tedious to watch in, you know, properly. And so they they have the little detail that, you know, he's he's trying to feel okay. The the ones leaving the cave are they are they sheep? Or are they human beings, you know? And for some of them, they're wearing them, yeah. And Odysseus tries in vain to fill the, uh, what's it called? The, the drinking thing with water from the waterfall and realizes there's a god there. And the gods like to make their presence known, you know? And we meet the god of wind and... The miniseries brings up that the gods disagree. There's a lot of infighting. And, yeah, the god tells Odysseus he's the first man to use his mind. He knows there's always something to learn. And that's such a great, that really, you know, I can imagine that there, there might be times where that's less important, but certainly today it is very important. You know, it was... Was there something in 1997? I'm not sure they were going off one specific thing back then, but you know, today, like, it's it's incredible that there is, you know, actually, there, yeah, there's there's two two working ah vaccines for COVID. You know, that yeah, there is always something to learn. And Odysseus won't tell the curious guy what's in the bag. And ultimately, they are both in the wrong. Odysseus should have told him what was really in there. And the, the guy shouldn't have tried opening the bag. Odysseus is too arrogant. You know, sorry, tried opening the bag when Odysseus specifically told him not to. But Odysseus is too arrogant and the other guy is too curious. And both of these things can cause a lot of, lot of trouble back then and today. And Penelope sees the bird and feels Odysseus must be alive, but she's afraid to say it out loud. And the, the curious guy even says, Odysseus can keep it. I just want to know what it is. You know, I, th I think that's the definition of curiosity. I don't even really want it. I just want to know what it is. You fools! You betrayed me! You betrayed the law! Each one of my brothers was turned into an animal before my eyes. It looked incredible! The effects were state-of-the-art, and you'll just have to take my word for it. I mean, that is a bit where, like... Actually, come to think of it, I think other adaptations also just had him tell the thing, but I think I've seen at least one, I think the animated one I saw, you see very clearly the the transformation, maybe not into animals, but from animal back to man. Yeah. Which, you know, you, you can see that they turned back into human beings in this, but they don't, 
I guess it would have had to be like morph effects, like an anamorph kind of thing, but yeah. The animals are trained well to, you know, you do legitimately feel like these are Odysseus's men turned into animals. Like there's, you know, you've got the, the, uh, what's it called? Like the, the chimp, I want to say, you know, looking like, yeah. And the, like. Yeah, but yeah, the the chimp that I think Odysseus himself even realizes, you're you're one of my men. I you know, you must be hungry and thirsty. Wine with honey. I think you mean complain with sweetheart. I mean, I'm pretty sure that several of those animals in the same shot are filmed separately and composited together. But it does look that it does still look quite good, even in you know you don't even have to say for 1997. It it's pretty convincing. It's yeah, like I guess if you if you really look carefully, you can tell that it's the you know, and it is like again doing this live action, you know, and really takes some. You you've got to. You really got your work cut out for you because you cannot put some of these animals that close to each other in real life. That is just not, that's a recipe for disaster. They are going to attack each other. You know, it is, it is possible to film like, I think one of them is maybe like a lion or a tiger or something, you know. And I think at least one of them is like a baboon. But you do not want to put those two animals that close to each other, you know. And Pilates turns back into a human from a pig and is, of course, angry that at the ones who try to cook him. And, and, and eat him. Sorry, that was what I meant. Is that why Pilates, isn't that like a, a form of exercise today? Is that the exercise he gets chasing after the guys who are going to eat him? And I do also like, you know, at first we see the one guy who realizes he's like holding the pig and he's like, you're not going to eat him. I'm not going to let you eat him. And then it cuts to Odysseus up there and then it cuts back and they manage to overpower that one guy and they're trying to cook the pig because they're hungry. They are, they've, they've been at sea. And they just, you know, of course they want to eat. And he sounds insane. And I think that's also the guy who lies all the time. So it has that thing of like, you know, he's always telling stories that aren't real. So when he finally tells the truth, you know, it's it's the um, boy who cried wolf kind of thing. Or in this case, I guess, man who cried man pig. And... Very powerful when Odysseus' mom drowns herself. There we go. And Odysseus dreams of Penelope. Let's see. And yeah, and we're told it wasn't five days, it was five years. And Eric Roberts plays Slimy so well. I mean, he didn't have to twist the knife like that when telling, you know, Telemachus that, you know, what he thinks happened to Odysseus. And, let's see. Yeah, and Telemachus talks to Penelope about Odysseus. So, sorry, about, sorry about the suitors for some reason the voice typing gets odysseus and the suitors very wrong so sometimes yeah yeah the telemachus goes to talk to penelope about the suitors for you know for that first time and penelope keeps moving her head while the servant girl is trying to put pins in her hair 
that's that's supposed to be a joke, right? Because it's it's kind of hard not to love. I I think it's a joke. It's very funny. Like it is legit. Like, and it it doesn't undermine the seriousness of the scene. It's just that like she's she's desperately trying to no okay no, nope she moved again. <laughs> just it's it's very funny physical comedy. It's it's legitimately like because and and you get it because like I mean really what it, it's she should like Penelope should have said it's okay you. You can you can put those things in my hair. You can put the pins in my hair after I'm done talking to my son. It's okay, you know. But you know, at first she's like defiant, so she's got her head turned away from Telemachus, and Telemachus is trying to shock her out of you know, he feels like she's being complacent. So she like turns her head to, to face him and like you know, just does all these it's it's very funny. It's a very funny scene. I think it's supposed to be, because it it's very, very like yeah, I mean, they must have realized that it would, yeah. And Odysseus and his men go, to, you know, travel to the River of Fire. Excellent design on it. Very memorable. It, it really, like, all of these little touches, all of these details, parts of the river itself are literally on fire. There's like fire, like I, fireball falling from up above down into like, yeah, some of it keeps burning and some of it is maybe put out by the water, I want to say. And you've got all these ghostly figures that like, and, and just all of this stuff. It's just, yeah, yeah, sorry. Now I remember the other thing. And when, when he reaches Christopher Lee, the, the blind prophet, I want to say, is his title, you've got, like, lava flowing right by him, and that's where, you know, Odysseus throws the, the goat into. And you've, there's this other part where Odysseus passes by, and to the side of him, I guess it's supposed to be, like, lava flowing down, but it kind of looks like... A being made of fire, like, contorting or flexing or something. It's just, like, ah, get that away from it. Like, it is, it is, like, low-key Silent Hill stuff. Like, it's not quite Silent Hill, but, man, it is, ah, no, that is not, no human being should ever see that. It's just, it messes with our mind. You know, you just, man, you, you just, you see it, and you're like, that's wrong. That's not right. That doesn't exist. I hope I wake up soon, because this is really a horrifying nightmare I'm having. Just, yeah. And Christopher Lee fits like a glove, as expected. I, this is the exact kind of thing, you know, R.I.P. He was unbelievably talented, and he... It's not a surprise that he fits this perfectly, you know. I was he already cast in Lord of the Rings before they were making this? No, there's no way that like Peter Jackson watched this and was like, "Get me that guy." But no, no, he was already very famous. A lot of the cast in this were already very famous, but still, it's, you know, he just the the voice and the the face the the he conveys. So much, just, yeah. Let's see. And, you know, when, when, yeah, when, you know, uh, Christopher Lee says, you know, give me the, give me the goat, or sacrifice the goat to me, something like that. And Odysseus says, no, first you tell me how to get back to Ithaca. And then, like, you know, they, they talk briefly, and then Odysseus throws the goat into the, the lava flowing. And I just, you know, I just MST3K, dude, dude, you weren't supposed to throw it down there. I think I know all the tricks that went into creating the realm of the dead in this miniseries. Even though, it's a, 
Even so, it's still incredibly impressive to look at. And Odysseus' mother in the realm of the dead tells him about the suitors. And Penelope explains about the shroud. I guess some people don't find Scylla and Charybdis to be nightmare fuel in this. I just don't understand how. And, you know, the Cyclops is horrifying and the realm of the dead. Just, yeah, un unreal how the... And I really appreciate details like that the... Uh, let's see. The, yeah, the suitors are passing the time with the kind of wrestling they did back then. You know, it's like... Obviously, you have to visually, you have to convey that they're passing the time. They're, they're, they're not working. That would be one thing. If they were helping to, you know, they're, they're sitting around eating a lot of food. Be nice if they maybe helped, you know, deal with that. No, they're just, they're wrestling. And then they want Penelope to come praise the winner, you know. But, so, so they need something for the suitors to be doing. And they wrestle, and they wrestle in the way that the ancient Greeks used to do, you know, that, that style of wrestling, you know, in, instead of having some sort of more contemporary thing for them to be doing. Oh, excuse me. I took some headache medication six hours ago, which means... It was time for some more. Because the pain is still there. There we go. Now, let's see. Right, that was one of the things. And I also like details like, you know, when Odysseus prays to a god or goes to the realm of the dead, he sacrifices. You know, when, when he goes to pray to Athena early on, he picks up a decapitated goat's head to offer as an offering and yeah goes to the realm of the dead he brings an entire goat because christopher lee can really get odysseus's goat that's probably not going to be the last pun either no and ah, excuse me don't worry i do not have corona i wash my hands very carefully since the last time I was out, and I will wash my hands very carefully before the next time I do go out. Now, let's see. Right, yeah. Odysseus lands on Calypso. Yeah, I very briefly want to say, like, the sight of Scylla, you know, coming in and eating, and did we see, like, a pair of legs left? How is that not horrifying? How do people watch this and say, eh, that's not that scary. I've seen people be eaten with only their legs left. That's not that scary. And, you know, when, when, the, when the ship is kind of stuck, and so Odysseus climbs the rope, and you see the men falling into, uh, let me think, Charybdis. You know, and, and yes, yes, I get, you know, originally it's supposed, you know, Scylla and Charybdis are supposed to be on two sides. It's not supposed to be you meet one, and then you get past one, and then you meet the other. I get that, but, I mean, it's live action. They, had a, they were on a budget. They have to do something to, you know, today with CGI, you could do both. It's, anyway, and, and seeing them fall and just disappear, into, and, and you see this massive thing, and then it, like, it's, it's like a mouth, and it closes, and the water is, is over. It's just so, such, such excellent sign. Anyway, Odysseus lands on Calypso's Island, and the way the maids are standing, you can tell there's something off. This, there's, there's just something wrong. There's something kind of unnatural. And Odysseus mourns his lost men. I, th and I think this is one of the times where he cries, yeah. And, yeah, it, you know, I, I really appreciate, you know, 1997, 
they weren't afraid that people were going to watch and say, ah, they're not supposed to, you know, men aren't supposed to cry and men aren't supposed to care about other men, you know, but yeah, it's, it's legitimately healthy to cry, to care about, you know, other, others of the same gender as you, you know, that doesn't mean you're gay. And even if it did, it w there wouldn't be anything wrong with that. But so much media is terrified of admitting that, is scared that people will just, you know, yeah, basically that people will not watch a movie where something like that happens. But the thing is, if we're constantly making movies that allow for that kind of thing, then no one will make a movie that forces people to confront that. But if everybody agrees, you know what, we're just, we're going to make movies that confront that, then either you keep watching movies and you confront that, or you stop watching movies. And after a while, you're going to be like, okay, you know what, fine, I'll confront it because I want to watch movies again, you know. And Telemachus tries an appeal before the elders, but the suitors win. He does get a ship with the Eric suitor figuring that Either he'll end up dead, if not, they'll impale him. Just, you hate Eric the Suitor. I'm gonna, I forget his last name right now. Eric Roberts, excuse me, as his Suitor character. He's just, he's so, excuse me. I actually come to think of it. I guess I could set this to go off the next time I take the pill. In another six hours, if I, if my, what's that, what's that phrase? If the, if, yeah, it's right on the tip of my tongue. If symptoms persist, which I have a bad feeling that they will. Is it actually that bright out or did I forget? That? Yeah, I guess so. It's not that I forgot to turn off the light in the other room. Anyway, uh, whoops, that was too, ah, one second. Uh, let's see, I guess that should do it. There we go. Now, let's see. So, yeah, and Hermes convinces Calypso to let Odysseus go, even though clearly she's devastated. And Eric Roberts sees with his own eyes. Penelope does, in fact, undo the tapestry shroud thing, and that's why it's taking so long. And the King of Sparta talks to Telemachus. I also saw some say that that was a lot of alliteration. I uh, saw so some criticize that, ah, give me a second, the, that Telemachus' journey was so short. I really don't think that it needed to be longer. I mean, it conveys, excuse me, what it needed to, in my opinion. Ah, uh, the lighting is, yeah, because it's so bright out, I guess. Yeah, that'll have to do. Odysseus sleeps on the fishing ship and again dreams of Penelope and we again see the tree of the bed, which really makes it strange that the movie, the end of the movie doesn't use that for Odysseus to identify himself to Penelope, considering it's in the poem. And Odysseus arrives at Ithaca and, yeah, and partakes in his cheese, his wine, and his bread. And the old guy can barely believe it's really him. And Telemachus can barely believe it's really Odysseus as well. It is really legitimately heartwarming to see Odysseus come home and reunite with his loved ones. And Athena appears to Odysseus again. And we get that really great quote. You must remember that being angry is easy. But being angry at the right man at the right time for the right reason, that is difficult. Now, obviously, you should not kill someone unless you're certain that it's the only way to prevent them from killing you or someone else. 
but it is definitely true that far too many people are angry at the wrong people and at the wrong time. And that's, in fact, one of the biggest sources of problems in the world today. So, yeah, again, like, the, there was a good reason for them to put all this time and effort and money into making a big adaptation of this to convey these you know like think of the, there are plenty of times along the way where Odysseus maybe felt like attacking one of these creatures but he had to realize you know you can't you can't defeat everything you'd like to so you yeah you have to be it's it's difficult to be angry at the right person at the right time for the right reason that's yeah and let's see. Yeah, so I guess I should. I'm kind of I'm going back and forth right now in my head on how political I should get with this. Let's see. Too often, poor people are angry at other poor people over poverty, even though. It's, you know, it's not poor people's fault that there are poor people. It's the fault of the rich people who refuse to share and who maintain a system that is very, that makes it extremely difficult to become rich if you aren't born rich or have a benefactor or something. I didn't say impossible. I said difficult. And let's see. I guess I should, I think that's as political as I'm going to get right here and right now. The suitor who wants to kill Telemachus, a Anthus, I think it is, legitimately is incredibly easy to hate, whilst still being a completely credible character. They didn't push it so far that it becomes ridiculous, like, but wow, you really hate his guts, and you really understand why Telemachus almost tries to kill him. I appreciate that the miniseries has maybe half an hour of material from when Odysseus reaches Ithaca. You know, obviously, what we the audience want to see is him taking out the suitors, but that is not the only thing that needs doing, you know, and it tests the audience as far as that thing of being angry at the right time at the right person for the right reason. And it does make it even more satisfying to see Odysseus take them all out. I, I don't think it would have had the same punch to it if just he, you know, he goes to the, the beach and like two minutes later he's stringing the bow and that whole thing. And Yeah, and I'll, I'll very briefly say, I mean, there are a lot of, a lot of people are seduced in this miniseries. I felt like each time it was credible, like you could, you could buy that, the, yeah. And everyone except the suitors leaves the room with the axe heads, and, you know, all the suitors are too self-obsessed and arrogant, they don't stop to think. They're suddenly all alone in the room with, you know, all these axes, and the, the bow is right there, and, the, you know, maybe it's a trap. I love the build-up to Odysseus taking the shot. Like, you have all these people who are simply unable to, to string the bow. And, you know, finally the, the old man walks up, takes the string, and he picks it up. And just, you know, and, and the camera show, the camera lines up so that all the, the, Axe heads, I think they call them, are completely in, you know, and fires off and manages to get them all, and, yeah. And, of course, Eric Roberts is the one suitor that tries to talk his way out of the suitors being killed. It is hard for me to overstate how effective I find the ending of this. Of, of Odysseus killing the suitors, being reunited with all his loved ones. It is one of the strongest endings I have seen to any filmed piece of entertainment ever. It is just 
yeah, and and I get it. I get that you know the suitors. It's kind of extreme to kill them over this. I don't know. I can't really explain. I'm I'm not saying it's right, but I am saying it's effective, and I don't think that it should go unexplored. And like I said, it uh, near the start of this video, the, the uh, let me think. What was the video? Ah, crap. Yeah, I I gave the title of a video near the very start of this video. And that video criticizes the, the thing with, uh, you know, yeah. And I think I'm just going to leave it to that. I don't even remember his name right now. I'm sorry. I like him, but I don't, I, my memory, yeah. And Odysseus tells Penelope she is his world. And the camera pans up to the tree. Their bed was made from of, around, or whatever. So I guess it is just supposed to be a visual payoff instead of a verbal one. I, I don't know. And, let's see. Yeah, so, yeah, so, the you know, two hours, 51 and a half minutes long without end credits, and 52 with them, and, it, yeah, so the cover says 255, IMDb says 250. 56. Maybe that's with ads. I don't know. Honestly, other than like the way the credits are done, which is very TV, you know, both at the very end, both at the very top and the very end. Other than that, it's hard to even tell that this is a miniseries and not just a, f you know, a long movie. I think that is what I have for this section. So, let's see. Excuse me. Notes taken before watching. Yeah. That's. There we go. And here we go. So, let's see. I had forgotten. I have apparently not seen Armando Sante in that much. I guess it's... I like him so much in these that it's... Yeah. Same for Isabella Rossellini. Now, let's see. And Eric Roberts. So let's see. Yeah, that's. At the risk of sounding like I'm kink shaming, do you realize that instead of, you know, as it is, we add ly to make something to the end of something to make it an adjective, but if instead you had to add ky, then kingly duties would be kinky duties. And I guess it's not a coincidence that you can't spell kinky without KY or the jelly. I love bad puns way too much for my own good. And yeah, so at the end, Odysseus finally returns home to Ithaca, finding that his wife is still waiting for him rather than remarrying, despite it having been years since he first left to go back to Ithaca, showing both that there are women out there willing to wait for years for their man and that some men refuse to stop and ask directions no matter what. I read in a in a review review last week of virtuosity, someone referring to some movies that Michael Douglas was in in a certain way, and I'm going to paraphrase and say that Odysseus in the in the Odyssey is kind of going through a God, it's so annoying how these beautiful women are always trying to F me cycle. Which is what they said about the one second. Michael Douglas. So, yeah. Now.
so the Cyclops kills the sailors just because they eat his cheese. Oh wait, never mind. It's goat cheese. He's 100% in the right. I don't really like the fat shaming, etc. of that one suitor, especially considering that all of the suitors are supposed to be unappealing. So why is he singled out for, like, they kind of, you know, oh, he's kind of overweight, a little insecure, maybe. I guess people think he has too little to offer. Like, the, the things that he says he can offer in exchange for marrying Penelope. It's like the reason the suitors are unappealing is that they refuse to accept that Penelope does not want to remarry, so they should focus on that, not whether one of them is physically and financially unattractive. It's, I don't know, I it feels like something that really shouldn't be in something like if it was made 10 years earlier, then it's no surprise, but 1997 really still, yeah, anyway. Maybe the sirens and Odysseus insisting on hearing the singing were removed because they felt it made Odysseus look too arrogant, made him hard to sympathize with? I don't know. Now, I have some recommendations for YouTube videos that I watched. And, right. Along a Difficult Journey or The Odyssey Crash Course Literature 201. Uh, you know, very, very good video. That was the one that comments on the the thing of the yeah the one the one that I couldn't remember the name of just a few minutes ago and classic summarized the Odyssey is also quite good let's see everything you need to know to read Homer's Odyssey oh and when I looked up trailers for this several of them were fan trailers very nice. Yeah, there were, you know, basically all the trailers I saw of this were really, really entertaining, you know. There was one original and then two fan ones. And let's see, video of Sparknotes, Homer's The Odyssey Summary, How Greek Mythology Inspires Us, featuring Louise Ellis, It's Lit. And classic summarized The Iliad. And, yeah, I just briefly want to, I'm not saying that other people should necessarily watch this video because it's an hour, 20 and a half minutes long. It's a University of Scranton lecture called The Odyssey by Homer, a History and Physical Exam. But, but yeah, you know, it's, it's like a... He he's got like a doctorate, I want to say, or some something, you know, fa fancy title. I don't rem I I have trouble remembering them. I respect them. I think he may be partially joking, but he says that the written word was invented so that the Odyssey could be written down, since it originally was spoken, not written. I do think he might be right. I think that certainly, you know, it's stuff like the Odyssey. And he says it grabs your attention because Homer starts telling the story in the middle, not beginning or end. And instead of starting with Odysseus, Homer starts with the sun, which the miniseries also does, but in a slightly different way. And it's important that Odysseus is not a victim. He doesn't complain. When bad things happen, he solves them. And yeah, so the DVD comes with a making of feature, featurette of 16 and a half minutes. Asante says the miniseries is not about deep thinking. A deep thinking religious text is an entertaining adventure. The director is very hands on, and Asante says the director is a magician of the heart, and I would have to agree. And there are several clips where we see the director literally show, demonstrate exactly what he wants from the actors. Not all directors do this, but it can lead to some incredible performances, and I would say it did so here. Some directors feel self-conscious since they're not actors, they're directors. And the giant wooden horse and the ships were built in England, and they designed the horse to make it look like it was built from taking apart ships. They succeeded. And the director admits to sometimes getting angry and shouting and says that the cast forgive him because they love him and he loves them. It's mutual. And... Yeah, and the DVD comes with another trailer 
it's good, but it is slightly awkwardly paced. Maybe to get in so much of what happens, I think. And yeah, and there's something like called cast and crew where it's just, you know, written on the DVD. Yeah, you put the DVD in and you can read the, you know, it took, you know, five and a half minutes to read. A lot of it is just kind of ragging on how these people are not that popular or accomplished. I don't know. I Was it written by some intern who was overworking, underpaid? I don't know. And that brings us to the final section. Quicksites, MDB, and Wikipedia. So I noted 72 different parts that I wanted to make sure to get into. So let's see. Now. So I am not going to read all of this. I'm going to try to skim and find the stuff that's... Let's see. Yeah, the, this one guy here says that Hermes was beyond overdone for... Hmm, I don't know. Actually, no, I, I don't really agree with that, but I acknowledge that some people find, you know, I did see one person who, he, he said something like, I always saw him as a mischievous teen rather than, let's see if I can get this right, the August issue of Daddy's Monthly, and I can see what he means by that, and that is definitely something, yeah. I, I, yeah, he, he didn't have to, they didn't have to pick one that was quite that, I guess it's this thing of like, I mean, the, the gods are supposed to look incredible, you know, the, like, it's a, it's a saying, the body of a Greek god, you know, so maybe that's what they were going off, but I agree, he, it's, I don't have a problem with men looking, you know, attractive to people who are into men, it's just, you know, let's, I, I quite, you know, like, Asante looks great throughout the, the thing, and that doesn't bother me, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me, but I can kind of see how, I, I don't think it was necessarily the best choice for, because it's not, he's not defined by his sexual, like, most of the characters in this who look really good, it's important that they look really good. You know, the suitors look good, and it makes them conceited. Circe and Calypso look good, so men fall for them. You know, Asante looks, it's, Odysseus looks good because he, you know, he's someone you could strive to, to be. But Hermes, the fact that he's attractive doesn't really go with you know, he's he's not God. It, it, like if he was playing, I don't know. Is is Narcissus a real god? I, I, you know, I've I've watched the Disney's Hercules, and I don't remember if Narcissus is a real. I I know that you know, obviously it's like narcissism, but I forget if he's actually a god in the Greek pantheon. I can't believe I've yeah. Sorry, I know I should have a more. I should be more aware of how Greek mythology is. For real, it's just, you know, when I was a teenager, it was very easy to put on the Hercules movie, is all. Now, let's see. Yeah, some people on, some people really didn't like the, the movie, but, let's see.
Now, um, yeah, several of the reviewers are like, you know, students who had to watch it in class, and some of them are really, really frustrated with that because they think it was bad. And I, I would say it's, it's, it can be very frustrating to watch a bad movie in class, but I don't think this was a bad movie. I think it was fairly fortunate. I, I don't think I had to very, watch very much bad stuff in class. I had teachers with good taste. Yeah, so the on the on the IMDb parents guide, it you know six out of nine it gave the gave it a moderate rating in the ah uh, what's it called in the in the hmm, what's it called area of violence and gore. Now let's. See. Yeah, so IMDb trivia. Many of the cast and creative team of this miniseries are of Greek ancestry. That's really cool. I really appreciate that. And yeah, Greek actress Irene Papas. I'm sorry, that, I probably butchered that. I do not know Greek pronunciation of, of names. Who played Odysseus's mother, Anticlea, played notable heroines in other Greek epics. In Electra from 1962, she played the title role, daughter of Agamemnon. In the Trojan Women, 1971, she played Helen, wife of Menelaus. And in, okay, I'm gonna try it. If Iphigenia, she was Clytemnestra, Agamemnon's wife. And on stage, she played Hecuba, in 2003 so yeah that's very cool that she's gotten so many roles and over so many years so that's almost 40 years that she's you know not f all the time in those 40 years but between 1962 and 2003 that's very cool that she keeps getting those roles and I can see why based on this she's great Coincidentally, the same year that this miniseries was broadcast, Disney's Hercules, another project based off classical mythology, was released. However, it was released on June 27th. And, oh, and here's another. Irene Pappas played Penelope in Franco Rossi's miniseries, Odyssea, from 1968. And, yeah. Now, let's see the... See. Yeah, so... I think that, yeah, this is from Wikipedia. The creature effects for this miniseries were provided by Jim Henson's Creature Shop, where they used a talking animatronic pig roasting on a spit, CGI for Scylla, a rod puppet sea slug-like sea monster that devours Lacone, the soothsayer, I believe, and the full-bodied version of Polyphemus. I think that's the Cyclops. Oh yeah, for when yeah for when they walk up to him to blind him, obviously they need the one that's to scale. Yeah, when he's moving, it's not. It's it's a it's the act. It's the performer, the the sumo wrestler. Huh? It was rated PG thirteen. I do not understand how this got away with the PG thirteen. 
I really would have thought there's too much blood and too much penetration of flesh for it to get away with PG-13. Was a PG-13 that much looser in 1997? Is it possible that the DVD I have... I mean, yeah. See, this I understand. My DVD says 15 or older, which is... Yeah, if, if this was an English, an American DVD, it would probably be R-rated. Maybe that's it. Maybe they made, uh, they made a toned-down one for TV, and then the one for DVD is the, is the one that isn't cut down. That, that might be, yeah. I really don't much. Yeah, oh, totally. Okay, if you remove the gore, the violence and gore from this, then I can understand why it's not scary. Now, now it makes a lot more sense that so many people said that it was not scary. They must have watched one that was much toned down from this. Excuse me. There it is. Now, that's right, yeah, the external reviews via IMDb excuse me, there were 10 total, and I copied in 5, so the rest of them must be dead links, other languages, and such. Now, let's see. Now, yeah, um, try. Sorry, I apologize for the dead air. I want to see. I let's see. I think this is pretty well put. Andrei Konchalovsky, the director, obviously had a vision for how he wanted the emotions to be played out on screen. Although I think he dipped too far into extravagance, and the viewer might consider it more insincere than tragic. However, if you consider how the individuals really might have acted, this is perhaps more true to ancient life. It is true that in the original Odyssey, men cry pitifully, passionate sobbing, and show their feminine side freely. You will also be amazed by the special effects in Hades. As Odysseus descends into hell slash Hades, he is almost overwhelmed with the heat. Some of the most bloody scenes I've ever seen occur in this movie, although they are not quite horror. Imagine bodies being gobbled up by a hungry sea creature and blood spattering on a wooden deck or a cyclops tearing a body apart to devour it. Because it happens during the daytime, the effect is not as intense. And yeah, so that brings us to the IMDb user reviews. And, oh, one second. I 
Yeah, there are 81. Wow, that... I'm sorry, this deserves way more. Only 81. Yeah, it, you know, the thing is, if you didn't watch it when it was on TV or buy it on DVD, you know, it didn't play in movie theaters, so it didn't... Yeah, I, I think this deserves way more than 81. I've seen stuff that I think is way less interesting that has way more reviews. But anyway, I did copy in and read all 81. And let's see. Where the story is simplified, it is done carefully and logically and leaves in virtually all of Odysseus' more fantastic adventures. Dispensing with most of the hospitality, minor character subplots, Telemachus' journey is over in seconds, and unfortunately with any scenes on Mount Olympus. The net effect of the story, sorry, is of the story told entirely from Odysseus' viewpoint while keeping an eye on events back at his palace in Ithaca. Yeah, that is true. It, it would have been cool to see Mount Olympus as a, but Again, you know, they only have so much time. They have to build all a lot of this stuff. You know, I ultimately am fairly happy with how they chose to. Yeah. Now, let's see. Yeah, some people really can't stand that the... Yeah, some, some people say that they didn't get a sense that Odysseus was smart and... And criticize some, you know, some aspects where the depiction of ancient Greek culture is, you know, where, where it looks, uh, yeah, I'm just briefly going to say, warriors wear underpants and one of the servant girls a long-sleeved blouse. And then he says, it is also quite unlikely that Odysseus was present at his son's birth, given that in traditional cultures, men were forbidden to go near a woman in labor for fear of bringing a curse on her. I really think that's one of the times where you have to... I'm really glad that they depicted it that way, because today... It really looks callous if a man is not present at the birth of his, his children. And in fact, because, you know, it very... I think it's, it's an incredible way to... It's, yeah, I mean, I've already talked at least twice in this video about how great of a decision it was to open it on the birth of Telemachus. So, Tel yeah. I, I might mess up the pronunciation of that name sometimes. It really, like, if we're going to spend nearly three hours on this, we have got to care about these three people and their relationship with each other. And 
you know, it's cliche, but yeah, it does. You know, the the we like it's been studied. We we know that it brings a family together when you know when a man and a woman have a child together. You know, for sure there are times where it isn't the case, but if they already love each other and are devoted to each other and are able to stay together, that's not always up to them. Some you know sometimes the like if an accident happens to one of them, you know that's not their fault, and that might mean that they can't be together. But yeah, and and folk like making that the kind of the focal point. Like every time we see Odysseus, he's been away for his from his wife for years. Every time we see Telemachus, he literally hasn't even met his father. You know, when when he was last with his father, he was such as he was so little that he he doesn't remember him at all. And Penelope has been missing Odysseus for years and feels this like she 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 is still devoted to him after all this time. It's everybody can relate. Oh. Not not everybody, literally, but. It is a universal thing, you know, it's, it's a, and it's a healthy thing. And that's, I think that's part of why it, it works so well to see Odysseus kill the suitors. They're breaking up the family. And I, you know, that's, I know the messed up thing is they don't really see it that way. They don't, they just want to, they legitimately thought that Odysseus wasn't coming back, you know. That's why. They didn't show up like two days after he left. They showed up ten years. or Actually, it, was it more than ten years? I, I forget. After he left and didn't come back and everybody else went to Troy came back already. You know, so you can, you can understand it from their point of view, but it is just, yeah, it's very easy to side with a family that wants to stay together. And... No, I, I really, I, I'm sorry, I was with this guy on some of this, but I really cannot, it would have been a huge mistake if this went realistic and said, no, you know, Odysseus wasn't there when she gave birth. I realize that that would be historically accurate, but it would be the completely wrong way for the, the story to, yeah. And... Now, well, if you read the epic poem, you know what to expect. Water, cyclopses, water, sheep, water, wind, water, sexy goddesses. Water, horny suitors, water, whiny youth, water, bad special effects, water, and, just for a change of pace, more water. And, let's see. This is kind of funny, so I'm just going to read. P.O.ing the gods was one of the three cardinal sins for the Greeks, called hubris. A second sin was pleonexus, being overly materialistic. I forget the third sin. I think it may have something to do with pronouncing nuclear as nuclear. That's funny. And let's see. Yeah, so I'm just going to read most of this time. 
We don't get to see Odysseus recognized by his old dog, Argus, when he finally returns in disguise to Ithaca. I don't know why I was left out. Everybody likes dogs, except people who like cats. I think, you know, I, I didn't remember this, but the I think it uh, was the overly sarcastic productions video, the, the one that, you know, the Odyssey s sum summarized or something like that. It points out that Argos recognizes Odysseus and then dies right after. I really don't think there's fairly little sadness in the in the climax of this m miniseries. It's almost all elation and joy. You know, there's there's a little sadness at excuse me, Menelaus. Me, sorry, not Men. Sorry, Telemachus. Who is Menelaus anyway? Whatever, Telemachus not being able to kill the the suitor man i i'm sorry i'm sounding really bloodlusty in in this video aren't i i really i i'm i'm really not it's just they're so easy to hate you know the, those those suitors i do appreciate that as far as i understand they didn't really exaggerate them in this mini series that's that's what they did in the epic poem they stayed around for a really long time they ate a lot of food drank a lot of wine and would not accept Penelope saying that she didn't want to remarry. That's, you know, that like, it would have been easy to, you know, to, to really hammer home how awful they are if they were, like, destroying stuff around the house. Or, like, if one of them took, like, like threatened Penelope, like, said to Penelope, I'll kill Telemachus if you don't marry me or something, you know. But no, they... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. They're just, they're so easy to hate. I I don't think Eric Roberts is even a bad person, like, in real life. He's just, he's really good at playing really obnoxious, hateable people, you know. But, let's see, the, the, um, I, th I think the reason Argos doesn't appear in this is that they didn't want to kill the dog, you know, there. And, and yeah, I, I can understand that. But anyway. And yeah, to return to the, the quote, the dialogue is stylized but rendered in prose, which is okay. Iambic pentameter helps you remember the lines. I think that sentence is, I am, is iambic pentameter, if I count it correctly. Homer just put that into the story to make it easier to remember. Rhymes and metric lines are memory pegs. 30 days, 30 days half September. Like the Iliad, the Odyssey was an oral tradition to be recited from memory before an audience. If you left out wine dark before C, you knew you'd messed up something in your recit recitation. Yeah, the photography and location shooting are achingly gorgeous. And let's see. Eric Roberts is your 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 Rick. Micus, the chief suitor, and add some touches to the role as a real scuzzbag. And Asante is a believable Odysseus. He's given some time to mourn the loss of his men, as is proper, and is allowed to weep convincingly. The special effects beat those in any other version that I am aware of. Scylla, the multiple-headed monster, who snatches men off ships and eats them, is truly spooky, looking like a highly sentient and directional Venus flytrap. Ugh. Seriously, you see, they wrote ugh into the, yeah. Which I'm glad. I don't get to say ugh enough. Yeah, the Cyclops is no better. He traps the Greeks in his cave, and after eating one or two, he gets drunk until, as Homer put it in one translation, he falls asleep, dribbling liquor and bits of men. Yeah, and I think this is a decent point. If you didn't know it already, you'd never guess that the Trojan horse was Odysseus's idea. And, and yeah, and then he points out about Odysseus, my name is nobody.
Yeah, here we go. Hermes was also a bit odd. My personal image of him is that of a cheeky teenager, not the September issue for Hot Daddy's Monthly, but what can you do? And they also said, yeah, this is also, some parts of the movie feel a little awkward or stilted for me in regards to the delivery of the lines, such as Cersei's character. That's true. She's not the, the best. I, I do like the casting, but the, yeah. Let's see. Okay, I just have to read this aloud just to say I completely disagree with it. Isabella Rossellini, she was just horrible in this movie. The odd sense of humor that she seems to want to bring to Athena is out of place. I really completely disagree. The, the person does say, never was her awkward way of speaking English more obtrusive. I do think that is a little bit of a problem, but her odd sense of humor is perfect. Now. This is not a Greek fantasy epic of old Hollywood, where sets, costumes, and social undercurrents of Greek society are cleansed for a general middle, middle, uh, middle American audience. No, this production shows the Greek tale as it might have been imagined during the time it was originally told. The dirt floors, primitive dwellings, the simple skins, armor, and weapons used, along with some of the musical and other artistic endeavors of the time. Classic Greek mythology is presented within an authentic classic Greek setting. Now, let's see. Okay, this is slightly amusingly phrased, so even though I completely disagree with that, I just want to quote. I think, yeah, this is the, the, the one-line summary of a, of a user, IMDb user review. Great Zeus, what utterly dismal crap. How does the film technically hold up? For starters, it was filmed on location in Turkey and Morocco. In some scenes, it was necessary to fly cast and crew in by helicopter. Anyone who has been to the Mediterranean will recognize that it's been filmed there, filmed there, not in America, and that adds a lot of very, very similitude to the film. And let's see. Yeah. So that is everything that I huh, hold on real quick. Yeah, this is it. The the I'll just really briefly. Yeah, so, the blue screen effect with the Cyclops was better than expected, although you never quite believe he's in the same scene as the other actors. And this is the part, some of the Jim Henson creature shot monsters looked a little, well, Jim Henson-y. Poseidon's serpent, for one, betrayed its puppetry origins rather blatantly. That's true. I thought that, I remembered that as being referring to Scylla, but it's true. It's true of Poseidon's serpent, I'm sorry. That is, and Hades was the most technically impressive scene. It was fairly obvious that the fire and smoke was real and not CGI. Plus, Christopher Lee was the blind Tiresias, so that's cool. Now, let's see. Yeah, so that is it. Wow. So, I talked for 
like over three hours about virtuosity, which is like a hundred minutes. And now I've talked for less than three hours about the Odyssey, which is almost three hours. Yeah, you never, just goes to show you never can tell. I don't think I really have anything left to say. Let me just really briefly gander upon. Huh. Yeah, okay, some of these, they drew the Cyclops and Scylla as more impressive looking than they are in the film itself. Meanwhile, the fire looks more, oh, cool. It, they have this effect of like, as if part of the cover on the, on the DVD cover has been burnt slightly. The fire, very cool. And you've got Athena, Penelope, and Calypso. And Odysseus swinging his sword. Some of them look kind of photoshopped, like like the filter, like they tried to take the lines out of their faces. Some it did not really work out for them, but yeah. I guess I will just briefly Yeah, it's Yeah, actually I am just very briefly here at the end going to show the DVD cover so that Yeah. Because it's worth showing. Let's see if I can get the lighting properly. There. I think it's pretty good. And I don't know how much you're going to have to. Yeah, you can see some of it kind of cool. So, yeah, I hope. I mean, if you've watched to this point of the video, hopefully you have already watched it so you don't just hear all of this spoiler stuff without having watched it but if not i hope i talked you into watching it or out of it in case it's something that you simply wouldn't enjoy excuse me and i think that is everything that i had to say so i guess I'm just gonna give it a few more seconds to see if i there's anything at the very end I can think of that I would like to say. No, I think that is absolutely everything. So, yeah, I really feel like it's a, it's a huge success, and I hope more people end up watching it somehow. I don't really think that I'm going to be the, the one to you know, but I'll throw my hat in the ring. And I, let's see. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.